Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about programming this at tiny 85 chip. We're going to be programming this chip with this Arduino Nano. Now on the Arduino Nano itself, you may have noticed a series of six pins here. Normally you never have to use these pins when you're programming this Arduino Nano. But these six pins are used for in-circuit serial programming, also known as ICSP pins. Now, they are primarily used to program this chip um, in manufacturing. Uh, so when the chip doesn't have a bootloader, uh, they use these pins uh, to access this chip and burn the bootloader on there. However, in this case, in our case, we're going to use these same pins that were used to program this uh, chip uh, to program the at tiny 85 chip. Now once you have your Arduino Nano in the breadboard, what you want to take care of right away is putting this 10 microfarad cap between the reset and the ground pins. And this 10 microfarad cap actually prevents the Arduino Nano from programming itself. And so once you have the chip placed in the breadboard too, and keep in mind the orientation of this chip. You should see a small circle on the left hand side of the chip which would indicate the very first pin. And then from here you go pin 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 6, 7, 8. Now just keep in mind that those are the physical pins of the chip. This will be important later on. So I've written this down for reference and these are just all the pins that you need to connect to. So Pin 13 uh, on the Arduino connects to pin 7 on the uh, at tiny 85. And keep in mind the pins on the at tiny here that I have listed are real pins. So, so they're the actual physical pins that you see on the, on the chip itself. Um, I'll explain why this is important later, but uh, just keep in mind pin 13 goes to 7. Pin 12 goes to 6, 11 goes to 5, and 10 goes to 1. And these are the respective uh, signals that each pin is uh, carrying. So I'll try to do this in real time as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, pin 13 on the Arduino is connected to pin 7 on the at tiny. So that's uh, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, pin 12 which is here, connects to pin 6, which is right behind 7. And pin 11, which is right here, connects to pin 5, which is right behind 6. And then pin 10, which is right there, connects to pin 1 which is right there. And there you go. That's all it takes to program this uh, chip. Hold on, hold on. Don't forget to connect the power lines. <laughs> so to power this chip, you need five volts. So I'm going to connect the ground. Where's the ground? So I'm going to connect the ground from the Arduino to pin four on the at tiny, which is right here. Right, and then the five volts, and then the five volts from the Arduino goes to pin eight, so the last pin on this uh, at tiny. And there you go. So now this chip should have proper power, and you have all of the lines connected to program it. All right, so now your Arduino should be connected to your computer. And the very first thing you want to do is go to Examples, um, and then Arduino ISP. And you'll have a new window. Now what you want to do is upload this to your Arduino, but before you do, you have to make sure that the 10 microfarad cap is off, is disconnected. Because then the Arduino Nano will have trouble to program itself. The whole point of that 10 microfarad capacitor is to keep it from programming itself. Now only after you uploaded the sketch to your Arduino Nano, you can then put the capacitor back where it was. 
We upload this sketch to our Arduino Nano to set up the pins to communicate with the at tiny 85 chip. And as you can see over here, um, you can uh, look at all the pins that are being used and probably even change them if you wish to. But I would advise against changing these pins. And that's primarily because the pins that we connected over to the at tiny are also connected to this six pin header. And to prove that, I'm going to disconnect one of the wires that we used to communicate with the at tiny during programming, connect my multimeter up to it. My multimeter is off camera, but uh, what it's basically doing is if it detects a short circuit, what it's going to do is beep. It's going to beep like that. Okay, so we have one end connected over there, and then we're just going to probe this other end, the six pin header. And there you go. Yeah, one of the pins provides a short circuit. That's why it doesn't matter whether or not you use the, the pins that I use or you use this six pin header, it, it doesn't matter. The pins are connected together, they're, they're the same pins. Another important thing to keep in mind is that I'm using the Arduino version 1.8.1 and if you are having any weird issues with your current version of the Arduino IDE uh, when you're trying to program this chip, then it might be a good idea to try previous older versions of the Arduino um, development environment uh, before you try any other solutions. All right, from here you want to go to File, Preferences, and in the Additional Boards Manager URLs, you want to paste in a URL for the at tiny library. Uh, this is going to be in the description. So click OK. Then you can go to sketch, include library, and then go to manage libraries. This should pop up and you can go all the way to the bottom. You should be able to scroll all the way down and find at tiny by David A. Mellis. Millis? 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 Uh, I'm sorry. The next step would be to go into tools and then just basically find your um, at tiny chip. It should be all the way on the bottom. Oh shit, you can't see that on the camera. <laughs> all right, so the next step is to go into tools and then set up your board. Um, so go into board and go all the way down and you should see your board right here. So click on that and then make sure you have uh, your at tiny 85 selected or wh whatever chip that you're using. Um, normally this chip runs on one megahertz internally um, and you can also change this to eight or 16 megahertz. Um, it's pretty useful to change this when you're trying to run code faster or if you're messing around with any timers then um, you can change this accordingly how you like it. Make sure you are connected to the right port um, and you can double check this in the device manager if you're unsure. And you should have your Arduino set as um, ISP. So Arduino as ISP. Now what I like to do first is burn the bootloader on this. So um, once you have your frequency selected that you would like it to run at, um, you can go down to burn bootloader and just fire away. All right, now you wanna go into file and go into examples and then click basic and blink. Now I'm just doing this as an example um, but after you burn the bootloader, you can just start programming anything you want into the at tiny chip. This is uh, just to give you guys an example uh, to blink an LED, right? And the pin that we're going to use is uh, any of the free pins available on our breadboard. So you can see on the chip we have two free spaces, two free pins that we can use as of right now when we're um, still on the breadboard connected to the programmer. Now you can see that pin 2 and pin 3 here are free to use. Now these are 
the physical pins that I'm naming right now, but in actuality, when you are programming, when you are programming and telling the chip which pins to use, pin two would correspond to pin three. And I'm not talking about um, pin three like the physical pin, I'm talking about in the program, in the software, you type in pin three to access pin two as in the physical pin. So to make this easier, you have to separate the two different types of pins that there are. So there are physical pins. So uh, the physical pins would be pins one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now there are virtual pins. Now those virtual pins are zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Say you want to use pin one right here. So this physical pin you want to use. Well, in the programming, you're going to have to call for pin five to actually use this physical pin that's pin one. So, so that's kind of how it works. If you want to use any specific pin, then you have to realize that um, when you call out a pin in the programming, it's going to use a different pin in actuality, in, like in the physical world. I like to separate the two different types of pins like this because it makes it much easier to understand. So now I'm going to connect my uh, free pin, which is uh, the physical pin two on my uh, chip to uh, the LED and of course the other end of the LED will go to ground. Now as we discussed previously, uh, the physical pin number two that I want to use corresponds to the virtual pin number three. So what I'm going to do is put in pin number three in this blink sketch. And we can just upload this right now. And there you go. That's how you program in at tiny85. I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. I'll try to respond uh, as quickly as I can. And there will be links in the description for you guys for um, anything that I found useful when uh, I was doing this. So thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next one.